All right, everybody. So now that the Mortal Kombat movie has officially been released, we can now <laughs> sort of judge it a little bit. We can see what they did good, what they did wrong, and what to expect in the sequel moving forward. So the first thing I think that they nailed is the chemistry between characters on screen. And a good example of this is between Bihan and Hanzo Hasashi, or Scorpion and Sub-Zero. They nailed that rivalry. Like, you could tell by the opening scene where Bihan is uh, infiltrating the Shirai Ryu compound. Like, and then even afterwards, when once Hanzo finds his frozen family and after he kills all those ninjas and he sees Bihan, you know they have a history. You know that they hate each other. You know they're rivals. And they nailed that chemistry. Same with Sonya and Kano. It, it all pays homage to the games, how, like, Kano's a bit flirty and, like, jokey. And then Sonya's more serious, more darkening. Like, they're polar opposites, basically. And they nailed that chemistry in the movie whenever there's dialogue between the two. Kano would push her around, Sonya would just beat him up afterwards and be more stern. Another thing that I think they did very well is the fight scenes themselves. Holy crap, they were amazing. Some of the fight scenes, in my opinion, were too short. I feel like we should have got a full scene with... Or I wanted to see more between Bihan and Scorpion. There was so many fights that I wish lasted so much longer, but at least they happened. The f even th they, they were more short and sweet, and that's okay because they were entertaining to watch. Even the training scenes between like Kung Lao and Cole Young, and especially we have to talk about how funny it was when we saw Liu Kang do nothing but sweeps to Kano. That was one of the best scenes in the movie just because of the comic relief. Most of the characters they absolutely nailed. Kano, Kung Lao, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion. Those four were like, I can see them being like, they're more like their video game counterparts, especially Kung Lao. You can tell he has the ego behind him. Same with Kung Lao in the other games. It wasn't as obvious he was trying to one-up Liu Kang all the time, but that's because Liu Kang wasn't milking it. Those care, especially Kano. They did Kano so well. Josh Lawson did such a good job. The humor, the fights, the just the dialogue between him and other characters. And same with Sub-Zero. You can tell that was Bihan. He's menacing. It was just Bihan. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. It was Bihan. I just wish he had more screen time and lines. Seeing as you made it this far, you might as well click that subscribe button. And thank you all very much for 400 subscribers. But we do have to get into the bad side of the movie now. There was little to no character development for any of the other characters. Of course, we got some character development for Cole Young, considering he's the protagonist of the movie. But other than that, we had no recollection as to how Hanzo Asashi actually became Scorpion. We saw Netherrealm for not even a minute. It was just 10 second flashback, night terrors of Cole Young and Scorpion. If they would have added some sort of Netherrealm story to Scorpion, I feel like it would have made the movie better. Because then we would know what Hanzo has been doing in the Netherrealm this whole time in order for him to get his powers. Even if you didn't add Quan Chi to it, at least we know how he actually became Scorpion. But we don't really get that. It's like he dies and then he becomes Scorpion out of nowhere. We don't get any recollection as to why and how he became Scorpion. And it's the same with people like Cabal. Even if you added like, as soon as he said Kano is the reason he's in an iron lung, even a little 30 second flashback as to what happened to Cabal before he got burned and how Kano helped him would have been a bit better than just saying it and not recognizing it for the rest of the film. When Liu Kang mentions that Baraicho found him and he was just a, a mess, and then he brought him and Kung Lao to the Wuxi Academy for training, even if we got, like, not even, like, the, like, don't even hire anyone for Baraicho, but at least, like, get some sort of likeness of Baraicho and not even show his face, so at least we get a brief description as to what Liu Kang and Kung Lao, like, how they were as kids, like, how did they train? Even, like I said, if it was a 30-second flashback, it would have been so much better than just having to assume what exactly went down that day. Another bad thing I think they did was the importance of some characters. Some characters, I believe, could have been taken out of this movie entirely and nothing would have changed. A good example of this would have been Natara. We barely saw Natara and she died. So what was the whole point of that? Was that just another punching bag? We want to see fan favorites and them just duking it out. 
And the fact that they killed off so many characters, they killed off Cabal. Sub-Zero was a no-brainer. Goro? Why would they kill off Goro? Even Melina? They did that in the video games, fans rioted, and now she's in MK11 due to fan service. Even Kano? Why would you kill off the best character in the movie? I won't even lie to you here, Shang Tsung wasn't that good. Honestly, if you got rid of Shang Tsung and instead put Sub-Zero as the main big bad of the movie, I think it would have been better, and Cameron agrees with me on that too. Sub-Zero should have been the big bad of the film. I feel like Sub-Zero should have been the big bad, and as soon as he got killed, that ending scene where Shang Tsung comes in, that is the first time we ever see him. That would have been cool. That would have been much cooler than what we got. Hopefully, well, we know we'll see Sub-Zero again due to him being Noob Saibon, but characters like Goro and Cabal and Natara, and okay, who asked for General Reiko to be in the movie? Who was hyping that up? Because honestly, I didn't care. Where was Baraka? Sure, he was mentioned in the- I think he was seen in Raiden's Temple. I forgot about that in the reference video. Thank you, comment section. We haven't seen Reiko since the 3D era games. I honestly forgot he existed. Some characters in this movie I didn't really get. And the first one was Raiden. Like, at the start, Raiden seemed disappointed, but if it actually was Raiden from the games, I feel like he'd be humble to train these combatants. But no, he just didn't. He, this Raiden seemed a lot more aggressive and stuff. Like, he seemed more of a dark Raiden. And Liu Kang. I don't know why. I feel like they could have done Liu Kang a bit better. I feel like he played a wise old man in this movie. But Liu Kang could sometimes be aggressive. Like, even when Kung Lao died, he didn't really- you didn't really see that aggressive but in the video games you did. I just feel like they could have added more depth into those two. And even characters like Sonya, she was decent, but I felt like they could have done her better. And also some characters like Reptile. Why would you kill off Reptile? If they would have added him in future installments and, I don't know, like, let's just say hypothetically made him into a storyline where he becomes a human but still has his reptile abilities, that would have been cool. But no, don't get me started on Cole Young. He was okay, but he wasn't that good. Here's my rating for all of the characters. Kung Lao, 7.5 out of 10. Sub-Zero, I give a 9 out of 10. They nailed behind. Scorpion, I give an 8.5 out of 10. It would have been a 9 if they would have went more in depth on how he became Scorpion. Kano, 9 out of 10. Seriously, this guy freaking nailed it. The only reason I am not putting it out of 10 is because they killed him off. So it was a waste of time. Like, Kano should be in the next MK movie. I hope as a Revenant, but we'll see. Raiden, I give a 5 out of 10. Liu Kang, I give a 4 out of 10. Sonya, I give a 6 out of 10. Jax, I actually give Jax a 7 out of 10. Cole Young, I would give a 6 out of 10. Wasn't that inspiring? Sure, it's cool how he's a descendant of Scorpion, but they could have made that feel so much more special and so much better. I don't know. I just feel like they could have kept that a secret, and then it would have been much more of a surprise but at least in the sequel we will see most likely noob cybot and well it's heavily hinted we'll see johnny cage hopefully we see kwai liang bihan's little brother the the other sub-zero give sub-zero more screen time or give bihan more screen time because joe deserves an oscar for his performance my overall opinion of the movie my overall rating i'd give it a 7.5 out of 10 or an 8. Simply because some of the moments in the movie did make me happy. Like, especially the inclusion of Johnny Cage a little bit. I, I would have been more upset if Johnny Cage wasn't in, like, in the movie at all, but at least he made some sort of a cameo. How they could have improved, kill off less characters, give more character development is basically what it comes down to. This movie was set more for making the sequel. And that's okay, because apparently Joe signed for four Mortal Kombat movie contracts or whatever. So that means we will get four movies with Joe in it at least. Let me know what you guys thought of the movie down in the comments. What would you rate it? What do you think they could have done better? And what did you like about the movie? 